Okay guys, so I've installed the new motor and I've got the drive line sort of hooked up. I don't know if you guys remember from the previous video, I was gonna use plastic straws and make makeshift little shaft, but it wasn't gonna work that well because I needed to flex and I didn't wanna make it too rigid. So I ended up going over to, this is just surgical tubing. I got the two ends close together and I just slid this across. I made a little cut in the rubber just so that the little locking mechanisms can hook into the rubber. The big issue I think I'm gonna have here is shorts on the tower, because if the tower flexes too much on tight, tight curves, that actually touches the frame. And I don't really know how to overcome that yet. It might not be a problem, but that's what I can see for the moment. Another issue that I came across, I was gonna glue the motor permanently to the frame, but if I have to realign it, or if I have issues, if I use epoxy resin, I need to bring an angle grinder or cutting disc to it, and then it becomes bigger than Ben-Hur. So what I ended up doing was just drilling through the bottom of the frame and screwing the motor in place, right. Now I know what you're gonna say, oh, the screws will touch. There is a possibility for that, yes. But I've drilled the holes big enough, the screws don't actually touch the centers. They've got these plastic little grommets that's actually holding on to, that's pulling the motor and everything close together. It's actually not touching the shell, uh, the frame. It could still move and then possibly create a short. I'm hoping it won't. Nothing is foolproof in this, guys. This is something that's not supposed to be, it, it was never meant to be the way that I'm doing it now, but I've got it hooked up. At the moment, I don't have any shorts, so fingers crossed. I did run into a little bit of a trouble, a uh, little bit of dramas with this uh, gear here. I think this gear here is a bit warped, warped or bent. Now I did warm it up. I did put it in the microwave a little bit and it's not, it's not flattening out. So I just aligned it on the shaft as neutral, as, as perfect as I could, but it is running at a bit of a, a buckle or a wobble and that's going to cause noise, unfortunately. I also did go and clean up the wheel sets. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna paint the behind the wheel flanges so that if they move, they're not touching onto this because the insulated side, we definitely don't want it touching that side. And then I also cleaned all this. All this was just cleaned with methylated spirits. I didn't need to sand anything down. It was quite easy. Same as what I did stripping the shell off. So this is an Athen Genesis 5 pole. Uh, there's no gears in the, in, the, in the trucks. It's purely tower. So that's, I don't know how many volts. I'm running this on DC for the moment, guys. I don't know if you can see, but that little gear there is a bit is a bit of a, a bit of a problem for me at the moment. So I ended up greasing it up a bit, and now I'll just let it run back and forth, back and forth a little bit, and just um, get the motor and, and the gears and the top settled. Um, I'll be popping these in shortly, and then running it again, greasing everything up. After that, I will move over and get my DCC board in. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of a, a V. There's the motor sitting a little bit lower. Um, I, can, I could raise it up, it's not hard to do. The problem I have is I need clearance at the top to get my Soundtracks decoder board in. I wanted to do my speakers in the fuel cells, but I ended up deciding not to do that. I'm probably going to fit my speakers either in the cab or maybe even on this truck right underneath the shaft, there's enough space there. But I don't know yet, I haven't looked at it yet. Um, one other thing that I had to do was I had to drill the lights for the into the shell for the lights, the rear and forward headlights. So that's where I'm at with that at the moment. I will move on to the next step. Nice. So So finished with the painting, finished with decals. Um, what I'm gonna do from here is put some windows in, do the window glazing, uh, sort out the lighting issue and do a bit of an interior because I would like to have two cab figures in it if possible. 
and then from there it's on to the bench to do the DCC stuff now the extra details I'm not going to show on camera I don't think there's any point in that but I'll show you guys how I do the DCC that'll be the last segment and of the actual build and after that at some point as normal I'll just do a running session where I've got it with a few wagons just so everyone can see what it pulls up like it's coming along very nicely I'm, I'm happy there's a few imperfections I'll spin the model around so you can see it. There's a few imperfections. As you can see, the white line, the red line, unfortunately, had a bit of white paint bleed through it. I don't know what happened there. Well, I might have just actually pulled up the red paint when I pulled the masking tape off. So that's the issue on this side. The issue on the other side is uh, the red line's a bit wavy. It's not a straight line, which is annoying, but I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to change that. Let me just spin it around so you can see. That's the back of it, right there. Right. As you can see, there's a bit of a wave going through there. Not the end of the world, but it's not perfect. So, but it's perfect for me. That'll have to do. The decals that I ended up using, uh, some of you might notice, it's actually the decals on here is a bit big. It's because I used O scale decals. Uh, for some odd reason, no one makes demonstrator alco in ho scale decals micro scale don't um, so i use the micro scale o scale decals and i have to cut them and chop and change because they also don't have the 630 um, numbering on there so i had to make that up um, the yellow on here is also not very typical i just had it and i added it in i thought it made it look a bit more interesting so hopefully from from here on no shorts because fingers crossed for no shorts I've quickly pulled the shell off. It's nothing has tied down yet. I'll pull the shell off and show you what it looks like on the inside. So I managed to run this a little bit back and forth. The motor's not getting hot. It doesn't seem to be any shorts, but time will tell. Unfortunately, this is the sort of thing. Shorts will only pop up once you start putting weight on it. Once the motor gets on the torque and starts twisting a little bit. Once you do K curves and all those sort of fun things. Um, yeah, so unfortunately we'll have to wait and see how that pans out for us. That this is the fuel tank bolt. It's a bit long, but it's not actually touching the flywheel. It looks like it, but it's not touching the flywheel. So that's where we're at, at the moment. I will keep you guys posted. The next video will be sitting down and installing the DCC board. And yeah, we'll see how we go from there. Hope you enjoyed the video so far. It's been fun making it, that's for sure. Um, I really enjoyed working on this model. I've, I might actually pull my other ones out. If this one works out well and it's not going to give me issues with shorting and make me want to pull my hair out, it's, I might do the rest of them as well. I've got a few more sitting on the, on the bench and on the back burner that I might get into repairing and polishing and trying to strip the patina off. But yeah, that's it for this. Uh, this segment guys look out for the last the grand finale this dcc sound install thanks